Welcome to LearnActiware.com, your resource for tutorials and trainings on the ActiWare software and the ActiWatch devices. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss the Actigram as well as reviewing rest intervals and setting our own intervals. The first thing we need to do in this video is to open an Actigram. If you've just finished downloading a device, chances are you already have an Actigram opened. However, if you don't, then you'll want to expand the subject you're looking at by selecting the plus sign here, and below that you will see a data collection event. I'm going to select the plus sign next to that as well, and it will show me New Analysis. If I double click on New Analysis, it will open an actigram. Go ahead and select OK to this message. Anytime you see a message like this, you can select Don't Show This Message Again, and you'll stop seeing messages of this type. Go ahead and select OK. We're going to have another one. I'm going to select Don't Show This Message Again. I'm going to select OK as well. And here is my actigram. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and maximize it so it fills the entire available screen. Now you'll notice when you first open the actigram, you'll be provided quite a bit of visual information. For the purposes of this learning, I will recommend that we toggle some of the visibility components off and learn them one by one. As you can see here, I will be deselecting several options from Visibility Group on the right hand side. I'm going to toggle all of the light components off, which is the yellow, the red, the green, and the blue. Now the data are still available, they just aren't shown on the actigram. Now that our actigram is a little bit cleaner and easier to read, the first thing to understand is that the actigram by default is centered at midnight. We do this because in most research, the overnight sleep will happen at night, and centering the actigram at midnight helps keep all of these intervals together and easier to visually interpret. However, this means that when you're looking at an actigram as shown here, this line indicates Wednesday, day two, but in reality, it is Wednesday from noon until midnight, and then Thursday from midnight until noon. To help orient yourself in where you're looking on an actigram, you can always select the actigram with a regular left mouse click, and it will give you a legend showing the exact date and time of where you clicked. Doing this throughout the actigram will give you a rough idea of where you are at. The next aspect of the actigram is the activity data collected by the device. This is represented by a black line. The denser and taller the black lines, the more active the subject was. As you can see here, this area is quite dense and tall, indicating the subject was active during this time. The lower and more sporadic the lines, the subject is less active. By looking at an actigram, you can usually pick out periods of activity and rest visually, even if you disregard the automatic rest intervals, which will be discussed a little bit later in this video. The next item you can see on your actigram is the event marker, as represented by this blue triangle. As mentioned in an earlier video, if the subject is to enter an event marker by pressing and holding the left button for three seconds, that will place a mark in the data. You will note that if you hover your mouse over the blue triangle, the exact date and time of the event marker will pop up in a tooltip. Pressing the marker button does not affect the data in any way. It is simply an input for you to know when that subject pressed the button. It would be up to you and your protocol to determine when the subject should press the button and what each button press means to your research. The next item we're going to cover is this purple line below the actigram. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little larger so it's a little easier to see that. The ActiWatch Spectrum Pro and the ActiWatch Spectrum Plus devices both have an off-wrist sensor. This sensor is built into the back of the device and is similar to the technology used in the touchscreens of phones. What this means from a practical standpoint is that the device can detect patient compliance. If a subject has removed the device from their wrist, the actogram will show a purple line at the bottom of the actogram, indicating the period for which the device was off. Along with this, you will usually see a dark blue excluded period, and this is an option we will be discussing shortly when we discuss setting intervals. What we will be doing now is re-enable the white light. As you can see, by doing this, we now have a yellow trace that overlays our data. 
This is an indication of the light in Lux that was reaching the face of the ActiWatch. If you look at the face of the ActiWatch, you will see a small hole where a photometer is located. The reason that this is important is that the watch will only report what it sees. So if a subject is wearing long sleeves that cover the face of the device, the light will likely report lower than the actual room light. This is especially important if the subject sleeps with their arms below the covers. The device may not detect that the room lights are on or any other light sources as it's obscured by the blankets. With most populations, however, you will find it a very useful resource for identifying the rest periods. Often, you will see a lights out and lights on time by monitoring this channel. Now I'm also going to re-enable the red, the green, and the blue channels here as well. And as you will see, this causes the actogram to be quite busy again. While this data can be very helpful for some types of research, if you find that you do not need those spectrums of light, you can simply leave them off. If you are specifically interested in this type of data and would like more information, I would recommend contacting our product support group. For our purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and leave these color channels off. Another item you may notice in an actogram is these gray stripes. Gray stripes are an indication of invalid data, and there can be several possible causes for this. One is if the device is vibrating because it's off of the subject's wrist. Another possibility is that if it's an ActiWatch Spectrum Pro, it can vibrate when prompting the user to enter a score. In these cases, the activity is being generated by the device and not the user, so the software will invalidate the epics where this happens. Another possible cause is if the device is plugged into communications. If the device is charging or connected to a USB cable, it cannot be on the patient's wrist, so we also invalidate that period of time. Now, we are going to discuss these blue shaded areas that are covering the overnight periods of the actogram. The software, by default, has an algorithm that detects major rest intervals. What this means is that the software will analyze the data and identify periods where the rest took place. To be clear, rest is not sleep. Rest can be defined as a sleep opportunity, or more simply put, the subject was in bed with the intent to sleep, but that does not necessarily mean that they were asleep. This period is visually defined by this aqua shaded area of the actogram. In this example, you will see that the rest period starts at approximately 1031 and lasts right up until 625. As mentioned earlier, to get these times, I'm doing a regular left click on the actogram and bringing up the legend. When using the auto rest algorithm, you should review it in all situations and determine if you agree or disagree with it. This is something you should decide before you begin your study and make a decision if you're going to use the auto algorithm completely or if you're going to review and adjust the rest intervals if you do not agree with them. We do encourage you to use the auto rest intervals, but we also encourage that you review it for accuracy in your population. If you decide you are going to change the rest intervals, you can do that by removing the existing one, which you can do by selecting the rest interval with a left click, like this. Then on your keyboard, you can press delete to remove the interval, or you can also right click and say clear interval. Please be cautious, do not select clear all intervals. Now that it has been removed, we can add our own. To do that, you will need to pick a time for when the rest interval begins. I would recommend that before your protocol begins, you pick a method to do this. Your method is completely up to you. You can use the software's algorithm entirely, you can use activity, you can add light, or you can even use the subject's diary if they kept it. Additionally, you can use the marker buttons to help you determine these times. What is important is that you are consistent in your approach. Once you've picked the times, you will click on the actogram near the rest start time. In this case, I'm going to use the marker buttons, so I'm going to use 1138 and 45 seconds, as that's when the subject pressed the button. You'll find that when you click on the actogram, you can't quite click at the exact time. Once you have clicked, you can use the left and right keys on your keyboard to adjust the time to where you need it to be. 
Once that is done, I'm now going to press the R on my keyboard for rest. This will cause the software to place a red flag on the data stating start rest. Now I'm going to move my cursor to the end of the rest interval. As before, I'm going to click the actogram somewhere near the time I desire, which in this case is 6, 16, and 15 seconds. Now as before, I'm going to press the left and right keys on my keyboard to adjust to the exact time I wanted. Once that is done, I'm going to press and hold shift on my keyboard and press the R key. As you can see here, it has placed another flag, but this flag indicates end rest. Now that both of the flags are in place, we follow this up by pressing and holding the control key on your keyboard and then pressing R one last time. This will remove both of the red flags and set the rest interval. For those of you taking notes, that sequence was R to start the rest interval, Shift R to end the rest interval, and then Control R to set the rest interval. There are several methods to accomplish this. You can find them all by clicking on Help and Contents, and there is a section on Setting Intervals. Now that the rest interval has been set, the software will then immediately look within that rest interval and determine where the sleep interval is as represented by this darker shade of blue. There is a small legend here at the side that will help you visually identify what each interval type is. What the software has done here is looked at the rest interval and identified from the activity where sleep began and where sleep ended. This process is done automatically once a rest interval is placed. You cannot manually adjust a sleep interval you can, however, adjust a rest interval. There are options within your software that will allow you to change the algorithm at which sleep is detected. However, we do discourage this as it moves your data away from the published validation studies. Additionally, you may have periods of time that you do not want analyzed at all for various reasons. If you have a situation like this, you can use the same steps we used earlier for setting an interval but instead of using the letter R for rest, we will instead use the letter E for excluded. For example, I would like to exclude Thursday afternoon. So first, I'm going to select with a left mouse click the time where I want the excluded interval to start. I'm going to press E on my keyboard. I'm then going to click on the end of the excluded period, and I'm going to select Shift E to end as before, you can see a start excluded and end excluded flag appeared. And then again, I'm going to press Control E. As you can see here, the period that I have defined is now obscured by a very dark blue area, indicating that it is excluded. ActAware will now exclude the data within this time frame for any statistical analysis. Finally, we are going to save our work. I haven't talked much about the database viewer on the side, but you will be using this to locate and open your data. In this case, we are working on new analysis, which is created anytime we download data. However, now that we have made some changes to the actogram, we would like to save it so we don't have to repeat our work later. To do this, click on the save icon here, or you can also select analysis save. When you do this, a dialog box will appear and ask you to name this analysis. This will appear in the database viewer under the subject, so you don't need to use the subject identifier here, but I would likely save it with a name that helps identify what it is. For example, if your protocol asks you to manually score each day, then you may call it hand scored, or you can simply say scored. In this situation, I'm going to name it Scored Data. And then select the Save button. As mentioned earlier, as we're working in a demo database, we should expect this message a few times. And now you will see the analysis has appeared below New Analysis. Ultimately, the name is not important, 
But as with all things, I would recommend that you decide on a naming convention prior to your protocol beginning. In this tutorial, we have reviewed the Actigram and several of its components, as well as how to set different interval types and what those interval types mean. Please find this tutorial and similar videos at www.learnactiware.com and visit us at www.actigraphy.com.